Hey everyone, Chris Sheeran and Chris Carino coming at you. Chris, so nice to see you. So nice to about to hear your voice as well during yeah. these tough times we're going through. Thanks for joining us, buddy. We appreciate it. Great, great to be with you on Yes Here. Yes, we're here. Yes, we are indeed. Stay with us. Remember that. Uh, stay healthy. Stay home. And, and Chris, you know, last week you put something out very poignant on social media. It was just about taking this day by day. You, you don't want to look too far into the future. Just take care of right now. And I think that was the best way anyone could put this, what we're going through right now. You know, Chris, it was, uh, it was something that uh, the capper, Tim Capstraw, actually uh, pushed me into doing. You know, we had, we had spoken uh, a little while before that. And, you know, I, it, with, with what I go through on a daily basis and, and living with muscular dystrophy and how it's something that's progressed in my life, and I, and I knew a time before I didn't have it, and, uh, and then, you know, having it as an adult and it gets a little worse. And um, I deal with it in a certain way that, you know, is very stoic and, and it's just the way I've gotten through it. And I don't think about it much in terms of, of overcoming anything. It's just what I do. And Tim kind of said to me, hey, you know, the, the world could use a little pep talk from you right now <laughs> because, because you, you know firsthand what it's like for the world to become inconvenient. And, uh, and then I, I gave it some thought and I said, you know, I, never, I didn't think in terms of that and how it related. But then when I started to, to do an inventory of it and it, it came together and, you know, uh, it was... At first, I did something that was kind of long-winded and uh, went on for a while. And, and my wife, Laura, looked at it and said, no, no that's not you. It, it changed the tone a little bit here and there and, and, and be more of, of you the way you are, positive and upbeat. And, uh, and then I just sort of grabbed, the, grabbed an iPad and sat down and, and banged it out. And um, a lot of people, you know, it's not easy for me to to open up and be vulnerable a lot. Like I'm a, I'm a kind of a private person. And, but when, the more I've done it over the years and in, in starting my foundation and the speeches I give at my, at my gal every year and doing things like this, um, it's made it a little easier. And the feedback I get from people and how much they, they enjoy it and how so many people I hear from, hey, that's just what I needed today. I mean, when I hear those kind of things, um, then I know uh, that whatever vulnerability I'm afraid to show sometimes, I know how important it is uh, to use my voice to, to get those thoughts out because it might help somebody. And, and that's really why I did it and why, what it's all about. Yeah, you said the focus on today, right now, learn from the past. This is the Cliff Notes version of, of that video you put out. But I thought, like I said, very poignant. Courage to ask for help. Uh, be humble in your vulnerabilities, focus on the positive. My favorite line though, Chris, was count the blessings, not the burdens. And I think that helps you put the positive spin on this gigantic negative that we're going through right now. Absolutely. And, and, and not that if you know someone's going through a worse situation than you, it doesn't necessarily help you get through with the pain that you're dealing with. You know, if you, if you have a headache and you know that somebody else out there has a, has a brain tumor, it, it doesn't make your headache go away, but it does give you a certain perspective. And I do think that no matter what it is that you're going through, I, I guarantee you could find something to be grateful for in your life. And if you can't, then you need to back up and go to the other part of that, which is ask for help. Because if you can't find anything in your life that you're truly grateful for, then you need to reach out to someone and talk to someone and help. And maybe that person can either help you get out of that situation that you're in or remind you of some of the things that you should be grateful for. And I always thought, you know, the gratitude thing and counting your blessings uh, and not your burdens is like, you know, we hear so much about washing your hands these days, you know, because you might get infected with the virus. Well, you know, gratitude is like washing your hands because uh, it, the negativity will infect you. So you have to, you know, wash it off. And when you're feeling, see, the thing is, when you're, when you're feeling anxious or you're feeling fearful or you're, you're feeling frustrated or depressed, 
if you're feeling, if you switch it to feel grateful for something and really be grateful and feel gratitude, it's impossible to experience those things at the same time. Think about it right now. If you're watching this, say, all right, think of something you're most grateful for in your life. Nothing else matters at that point. There's no other negativity that can penetrate that. So I think that's what being grateful and feeling gratitude is all about. And, and the fact that you were able to realize those dreams, Chris, it was really the impetus to you developing your foundation. Yeah. The Chris Carino, it's chriscarinofoundation.org. Just tell us how that started and what you all have been able to do since you started it. In my mind, I was always saying, when I get a big enough name for myself, when I, when I achieve some of the things I want to do, and um, I would love to get involved in trying to find a cure and trying to inspire other people who are going through what I'm going through, especially young people. So for years, I had that in the back of my mind. I remember I wrote a letter one time to one of the organizations that deals with FSHD that was going to volunteer my services to get involved. And I never sent it. You know, I, I just, it just, I didn't have, I didn't have the courage to do it at that time. And then it was a, a little later on and it was, it was Laura, my wife and I were one time, you know, something happened. We were at a diner one time and I really had a hard time getting up out of the booth that we were sitting in. And she just said to me, Hey, it's time now for you to acknowledge what's going on. And I, you know, I went back, I hadn't even gone to a neurologist in a long time because I was afraid and I knew when I went there, they were going to tell me the same things they told me 20 years ago. Nothing you could do, nothing we can give you. Live your life, do what you can do. And I did that, and that's what I heard. But what I also heard was when I told one of the neurologists that I was thinking about if I can't do anything for myself right now, I would start a foundation. And again, two-pronged. Find a cure and try and help people with this disease in some way that I can in terms of inspiration or talking to them. And he said to me, well, you would be a great resource for me when, when someone's diagnosed that I can send them to you because you, 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 you have a, you know, a great understanding and a great outlook and it would be terrific for you to talk to these people. You can be inspiring. And I said, I can do that. That's something that's easy. He said, but you know, research is hard. It's, it's, you know, you'd, you'd need to probably raise a hundred thousand just to have a good animal model in a, in a, in a lab. And it clicked in me. I said, wow, I thought you were going to say like 5 million, like 100 grand. I could do that. Like I could, I could think I could go raise that. And ironically, a few years later, one of the, the things I'm most proud of that we've done with the foundation is we funded a mouse line, a, a project um, with Dr. Peter Jones, who was at UMass Medical Center at the time. Now he's at University of Nevada. And that mouse model that he was able to develop with our $125,000 grant is now used in over a dozen labs around the country and around the world. I know this is a, a loaded question, Chris, but what does Capstra, Tim Capstraw mean to you? He'll, he'll joke that he's like my caddy. You know, he <laughs> carries the bags, <laughs> checks out the terrain, you know, right. it points out any dangers. Um, and I, you know, the, the one thing I, I it, Tim has been a blessing in my life. There's no, you talk about counting your burdens, not your blessings. Tim is a right. blessing in my life. He's a, uh, a humble, good person who would do that for anybody. Um, and as he gets older now, he, um, he jokes that he's going into management in terms of being my caddy. So he, he farms out a lot of the jobs. So, you know, we, we will uh, volunteer a uh, Ryan Rutherford or Ian Riley or one of those guys on the crew to, you, to for a little muscle sometimes when I need it. Um, and, th and those guys have all, you know, they're like family to me too. And then I, you know, um, but, but no, Tim, there's a, there's a great, I, I don't, I forget the quote exactly, but um, I think there's a stoic philosopher, Rumi, about, you know, 
it, surround yourself with people who fan your flames, not douse your flames. I'm paraphrasing it, but uh, you know, when it comes to people like like Laura, my wife, I talked about, or my son Christopher, or Tim, people that are close to me, like they fan my flames. I mean, that day when Tim said to me, "You're not going to quit. We're going to figure it out." It, 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 I went from a fire that was sort of smoldering a little bit and, and I burst into flames again. Like it just, it, it, it changed my outlook for the, for years to come well, because that's the attitude that he gave me. So um, I like to think that I do the same for him and I would do the same for him if the shoe was on the other foot. I think we have a, a chemistry that has developed that, we care about each other deeply. So I would do anything for him. And I think he knows that and he would do anything for me. And it's a, it's a, it's again, a, a blessed relationship that we've been able to do it for so long together. And I really thank you for coming on and spending some time with us today. And you know, Chris, just, just to, to, to lighten the mood here, I, you know, you talked about when you travel and it doesn't happen very often um, and you love being with all of us. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. It, there always seems to be some sort of a <laughs> delay, uh, flight cancellation. <laughs> uh, we get in five hours late. Yeah. You're around. It, I don't yeah. know what it is, but you've been a little bit of a jinx that way. Yeah. And um, I hate to bring it up, but I, no. I just thought it needed to be said. And I'm glad you did. You know why? Because that trip to Toronto... And Paul Pierce's story about Rick Pitino and giving out his pasta-shaped face yes. Christmas gift. That was worth the five-hour delay in Toronto. Uh, yeah, perhaps. You know, I remember we had to leave for London the next morning. Like it was not a <laughs> you it was not a convenient time. Yes, yeah, you were not there. <laughs> it was not a convenient time. We could have gotten the Paul Pierce pasta story another time. Yeah, that's true. We Sarah, didn't need to be sitting in, at, at four in the morning in the Toronto airport. Needless to say, Sarah Kustak was well-rested on that trip to London. Well, she's a great plane sleeper, so. <laughs> All right, Chris. Awesome job. Uh, thank you again for Thanks, being Chris. here. Great and uh, you continue to be an inspiration, not just to me, but thank to you. a lot of people.